Hi and welcome back to Becoming Podcast. We are doing a, a new subsection story time to, to do with the podcast. It's something a little bit different. So I'm going to introduce you to some of the tools that I have in the tra- of, the, of the trade, as it were. So um, first off, Thank you to the Boutique Hotel Leonardo for allowing us to uh, to do the shoot here. So again, thank you very much for you guys. So the story time, I'm going to explain a little bit about some of the tools of the trade that I use. And most of them are here in front of me, not all of them, but there's a, there's a fair number here. So when people come in to see me, we have a chat, find out what they've come to see me about. It could be any issues that are going on in their lives, with their health and well-being or relationships or, or areas where they're, they're challenged. And what we do with the shamanic side is we work on the energy side. So if I'm doing it a one-on-one person or if I'm doing it remotely for a person who's, um, I've been working with people in America and Canada, uh, the UK, Australia, New Zealand, so, um, you know, the people that I work with, it is much the same, but slightly differently. So when it's a one-on-one person, they're lying down on the massage table in front of me. When I'm working with somebody uh, via Zoom, then, yeah, they can be lying down on a comfortable couch or somewhere, but I do things a little bit differently. So when they're lying on the couch in a Zoom situation, I, uh, as always, with the people sitting in front of me, um, open up sacred space, which is the word of culture, so they are protected around their body. I open up my own as well, so I'm protected in that time. Then from there, I check with the pendulum and I go through the chakras again, whether it's um, uh, in body there or if it's a remote healing. So, what we do if there's a remote healing, I'm putting my hand and I'm imagining it's all about intent. Imagining going through under them, bringing up their energy bodies, bringing it back into the room, and then I'm placing it down. Now, if you can see in front of me here, I've got the different stones for the different colors for the seven main bodily chakras. Now, we know there's a heck of a lot more chakras in the body, but these are the main seven that I work with. Um, the first three are our main survival chakras, so normally there's always at least one or two of those that are, that are blocked. What I do is uh, I come over to them again. If the body is here remotely or I'm in person, I'm holding on to the pendulum and getting a reaction as I'm not working on anyone particularly. You can see that the pendulum is not moving at all. So if I was working on a person, that would be blocked. Uh, We get different readings. That could be blocked. That could be blocked or if it's going around in a backwards direction, that can be blocked. What we're wanting is a big wide mouth like this to show that the chakra is clean and clear and energized. So that's what I'm checking. So if I'm working with somebody, I'm going through all the seven chakras, making notes uh, in my head which ones are blocked. From there, I, uh, I go back to the person. I'm placing my hands under their head. Um, or if it's remotely, I'm either using a substitute or, again, working with intent and going through their deepening spots. And in the back of our heads, uh, we have two triangles that come down. One is at the top, it comes down to the first V. Uh, that's our deepening point, and this is well known in acupressure. And then to our second V. And the end of our second V is our release points. So I start with the deepening points, allowing the people to relax, to go a bit deeper. When they are relaxed, um, then what's happened before that is what I should have said is that the client has chosen a stone and a feather from my mesa. So these are the healing stones that I've been working with for, for years, and they take one that is um, that they are attracted to. So maybe it's this one here, which is my main uh, one of my main stones, and then they'll choose a feather. So it could be a black and white feather. So going through the process, I would put this onto the lowest chakra that showed that it was blocked and work with unwinding the chakras. So be going around in in an anti-clockwise direction and going through all the chakras as we go up through the body. From there, I'd go around to the back of the head again to the release points 
allow that sludge or gunk that's in the chakras uh, again working with the the mind and the intent see that sort of releasing and starting to come up then I'd come back in again pick up that sludge take it to the fire and release it into the fire give the feather a clear and go on to the next one going around anti-clockwise scooping it up putting it to the fire clearing it again going up through all the chakras or if it was really blocked maybe just working on that one chakra from there go back around again working with the deepening and the release points and allowing that energy to, to clean and cleanse and then when I was comfortable with that I would remove the stone put it to the side and then reset the chakras going around in a clockwise direction and then clear the feather go to the next chakra and to the next one so I'm working through all the seven uh, chakras in the body again whether they are here in person or it is, is remote work that we're doing from that when that feels good and I'm getting messages uh, all the time about what could be happening or going on um, if I need to do something else maybe putting my hands on their shoulders to balance out their masculine and feminine energies through their body I would do that see if there's any other work that we need to do and if not from there then I would go around uh, put my one of my hands under their their back so it would be from their heart chakra their fourth chakra but under their back and with this we would start to what we call uh, do a decoupling now the decoupling is allowing the body to be the breath and the body to be in tune with mother earth so having that under there, allowing for that breath and that heart rate to be in tune. So allowing that to, to happen. And that can take three or four minutes or could take 10 or 15 minutes. When that is in unison, and that can be through a sigh or a breath or messages that I'll know, then I put my hand under their lower back. And that helps to reset the flight or fight response that we have. So this is what we call decoupling. So this is um, quite an important area because the humans are the only ones uh, pretty much in the animal kingdom that can't automatically reset their fight or flight response. So when that's, once that is done, I'm bringing my hands out slowly, um, I will go back around, check the chakras again, make sure with the feather they're going in a, in a clockwise direction, clearing the feather each time. And normally I'll be spending a little bit longer time on doing that and making the, the, the mouth, mouth nice, and, and nice and wide. When that is done, then I'd go back over again and I'd check all the chakras. And normally they're flowing in this sort of position. Clear that, go to the next one. Clear that, go to the next one and see. And usually doing a seven chakra illumination or a seven chakra clearing, this would happen. If we're needing to do illumination, that is bringing light and energy down into those chakra areas of the, either the person um, or the, uh, the energy field that we've brought over here. Once that's done, and if there's no other work that are being communicated to me, then we um, start to, to, to slowly... Um, bring the person back to awareness again and uh, I will check the energies go around the energies of the body and uh, if they are ready I'd uh, close their world culture so this this a protective field around them when that was closed and I'd ask them to slowly bring their eyes open breathe their eyes open and come back into into now and that would be just a, the basic type of session from that that can move into other sessions where there could be entity releasements, could be soul retrievals, um, or a number of other uh, solid or crystalline extractions that can happen. So this is just a, a quick and broad outline of the shamanic work of one of the sessions that I do because I've had a couple of people, you know, ask me, you know, what it is. Uh, you see other tools of the trade here. Um, this uh, big crystal here I use for extractions. Um, the, uh, the, the rattle I use if I'm doing any journeying, the, uh, the chimes that are there, and the sage and the Polo Santo. So they all get used uh, 
usually not in one session but if they're doing two or three or four sessions from there so this is the roughly uh, the outline of, of some of the work that I do with some of the clients so it's the energy work that, that we're looking at and from there the people come to uh, the feeling a little bit sleepy a little bit tired um, I get them to make sure that they're grounded before they head off especially if it's uh, if they're driving uh, so give them water, give them time to, to connect with the earth again before they head off. Uh, from there they, they head home or where they're heading to. Um, drinking water, maybe going out into nature. If they have a bath at home, maybe having an Epsom salt bath to help with the clearing. And then that night, 90-95% of the cases they sleep really, really well. So that's really the basics of a, of a shamanic energy medicine practitioner's session. Um, if I am doing it remotely, of course, I send the energy back to them, allow that to integrate into their body before closing the, uh, the sacred space. So that's a little bit what I do. Uh, so a little bit different, but story time, and we'll be bringing a little bit other, other stories and news as we go along. But um, I just thought I'd like to, to share that with you. So uh, again, thank you to Hotel Boutique Leonardo, uh, and thank you guys for, for looking in, and we'll see you soon.